Hello and welcome to the RAST Network. What you're about to hear and see is limited to general financial information only. Please be sure to speak to your financial planner or refer to our financial services guide available at rask.com.au slash FSG before acting on the information. Hello and welcome to the Australian Business Podcast. I'm stepping in as your host today. I'm Kate Campbell. I'm usually over on the Australian Finance Podcast, but today I'm here on the Business Podcast to talk about tax, specifically what you need to know as a small business owner. And I have Peter from the ATO on the show today to answer all of those questions and give you a starting point that when you're starting a business, when you're hiring your first employee, trying to figure out, well, what do I do next? How do I pay super? How do I deal with my tax obligations so I'm on the right side of the law? There's a lot to think about, but we're going to try and break some of that down today. Peter, welcome onto the show. Oh, thanks very much for having me along. Now, before we jump into the questions, can you tell us a bit about your role at the ATO? So I'm the Assistant Commissioner for Super and Employer Obligations. And so what that means is I really care about uh, employers getting their pay-to-go withholding, their superannuation and FPT right. So my team, um, we try and provide education and assistance and support, but then we also look at um, those people that are doing the wrong thing. We try and identify them so that we can follow up with um, more compliance action. Right. And so today we're going to help everyone do the right thing by pointing them out some of the important resources. Now, as a first step, where do you recommend going to find reliable information if you're a business owner and you're thinking about hiring your first employee? That's a great question. And there are a lot of um, information out there for employers. And I think it's really important to set yourself up right from the beginning So if you um, understand your obligations and the better that you do that initially, the smoother and um, less time that you'll need to spend in the future. So make sure you're going to reputable sources for your information. Um, There's quite a few things you need to be aware of. So today I'm going to focus on your employer obligations, obviously being the area that I work in. Uh, The ATO has some great resources. We do have a website that is specifically for employers, and that is ato.gov.au backslash your workers. And that's specifically for employers and covers topics about engaging workers and guidance on how to work out tax and super that you might need to pay for your employees. I also highly recommend the essentials to strengthen your small business education models. Now, these are a really great resource and they cover all different stages of your business. And they also include some employer topics. So they've got ones on hiring, paying, super and FBT. And they are actually designed so that you can watch them in short bursts. So you might not have half an hour to set aside, but you might be able to watch them in five minute slots. Now, I know we are going to provide some links to all of these resources. So I'm not going to read out all of the web. Um, They'll be in the show addresses. notes. Yeah, that'll be great. Um, there is also the business.gov.au website. Now, that contains tools and checklists, and it's got a free hiring employees checklist. So if you work through that, then you can make sure that your business gets things right from the beginning. It's also got some information around pay and conditions and how to onboard new employees. And the last and very important resource that I'm going to point out to you is Fair Work Ombudsman. So if you go to fairwork.gov.au, that will help you understand your rights and responsibilities around paying conditions. So that's going to include things like awards, minimum wages, and then your obligations as an employer. Now, obviously, you also have the option to engage um, tax or payroll professionals um, to assist you to understand any of your payroll and tax obligations. Mm, I think often we forget how many good resources are on the ATO website when we've talked on the finance podcast for individual tax returns Everyone's very surprised when they realize the ATO website has some really helpful guides and I've used them before for my individual tax return. There is so many resources for small business owners as well. It's probably about collect, collecting and collating them. So we'll make sure to put all of the, the important links in the show notes. Yeah, look, I really agree on that because we do design the website to support people, to try and give them all that information that they can um, access at their fingertips when they need it as well because we know you're busy. You can't, you know, always do things in the middle of the day and it might be on the weekends. 
So once someone has done all of their research, maybe they're hiring their first employee at a coffee shop and they've read all of those resources, they've got an overview of what they need to do taking on an employee. From a tax standpoint, what should I be doing as an employer to make sure my business is ready? Okay. So as I said earlier, try and set yourself up from the beginning. If you um, get really organized, you understand what you need to do, then you're more likely that you're going to get it right. So I'm just going to cover six steps that I think are pretty important. Um, the first one is those, the first one of those steps is I would encourage you to set up online services for business. Now, if you're new to our online services, you'll need to set up my ID first. Now that's formally known as my gov ID. It's now become my ID. Um, once you've got my ID, then you can link your business using a relationship authorization manager. Now, while it's going to take you a few steps to actually go through that to initially to set that up, um, once you do, you'll be able to correspond with the ATO, you can manage your activity statements, you can update registrations and you can make and make payments. So it's really important. The second thing um, is also extremely important. All employers must report their payroll information through single touch payroll. So I'm going to refer to it as STP. So you report that to the ATO on or before you pay your employees. So this means that you need to make sure you've got STP2 enabled software and we have a product register available on our website so you can check if your current software meets the bill. Um, If it doesn't, there are um, some low-cost options available to you to have a look at. Now, once you've got STP, you're going to need to report your salary and wages, your pay-as-you-go withholding, your super, as well as your fringe benefits tax if you end up paying, uh, providing employees with benefits. Now, single touch payroll is designed to reduce the reporting burden by employers. So what happens is once you've run your payroll, you'll send that information to the ATO straight away. So you only have to report that information once. That information is also provided to other government agencies like Services Australia Um, So that helps them work out if there's any benefits that um, your employees may be entitled to. Now, obviously, if you're going to have an employee, you're going to need to register for pay-as-you-go withholding. Um, And pay-as-you-go withholding is the amount that you withhold from your employee's salary and wages. And you send that off to the ATO and then that helps um, your employees. It offsets their tax liability at the end of the year. Um, the fourth and fifth steps are around super, get making sure your business is ready to pay super. Uh, your fifth one is if you're going to do fringe benefits tax. And then lastly, you'll need to review whether you need to register for state and territory payroll tax. Now, you'll only need to do this um, if you're above the threshold for those different um, states and territories, uh, which if you're a small business, it's unlikely that you will be. Sounds like there's quite a few steps there because I'm just thinking about myself as an employee, all of that happens automatically. I don't have to think about paying my super or putting tax aside. It's all done automatically. But if you flip the roles and you're suddenly the employer, you have to think about all these different parts of the puzzle. Uh, Exactly. And I think in the beginning, it's going to be quite tricky because it is something new to you, but eventually it will become habit and it does get easier. I'm going a little bit off script here, but do you know if people just put some time aside each month to work on this? Would they put a few hours to just sort out their tax obligations for the month? Look, I think it it all depends. Some people, you know, you've got one of the spouses is at home doing the books and answering the phones and they might be doing that on a regular basis. Then you've got other ones, they'll hire a bookkeeper or, a, you know, someone to help them out with their payroll. And then you've got your people who have your receipts at the end of the month or whatever, and they're trying to reconcile everything back, which is obviously not ideal. So it is best if you set yourself up really well in the beginning. Yeah. And as you mentioned, there's a lot of tools that can make life easier and you can log expenses as you go instead of keeping the shoebox of receipts, which uh, is not what I would recommend. Okay. You mentioned a few acronyms like pay as you go withholding, <laughs> what P-A-Y-G-W and FBT for friends fringe benefit taxes and setting businesses up to pay super. Are you able to elaborate a bit more on how we do this? Yep, I certainly can. Um, and remember, all this information is on our website um, and there's going to be links attached to the podcast. So I'll start with registering for pay-as-you-go withholding. So 
P-A-Y-D-W, um, we call it. So you need to do that before the first payment that is subject to withholding. And that applies even if you don't have to withhold. So, you know, you might pay someone and they might be below the threshold, so you don't have to withhold tax, but you should still need to make sure you're registered. Now, um, if you haven't already registered your business, when you register um, your ABN, you can do your ABN, GST, pay as you go withholding and your business name all at the same time on the Australian Business Register. But if you already have an ABN, you can register or cancel your um, pay-as-you-go withholding business account. And you can do that online through online services for business that I gave a call out for before. Um, Or you can do it when you um, use your compatible reporting software in STP. So if you start reporting through STP, that will create a role for you. The other ways you can do it is through an agent, so a registered tax agent or a BAS agent. Um, You can give us a call or there are paper forms that you can fill in to do that. Um, I'm going to cover Super Guarantee next. Um, And there are five steps that you need to take to make sure that you set your business up to pay the right amount on time and to the right fund. So the first thing you're going to need to do is offer your employees a choice of super fund. And you need to keep your records to show that you've done that. Now, if your employees don't make a choice, you'll need to request your employees stapled super fund details from us. So you do that through the ATO stapling service. Um, And now a stapled fund is a super fund that is linked or stapled to that employee. Uh, So if they don't choose and there is no stapled fund, then you need to make sure you have a default super fund set up. So that's the default fund that you would pay any super amounts into. Make sure when you do send through super payments that you provide employees details, and that includes their TFN to the super funds. Now, this will prevent delays in processing the amounts or rejected payments um, and potentially an ATO audit. If we can't match people, then it might look like you haven't made those payments, so we might be in touch with you. Make sure you set up your systems to pay your super contributions electronically, um, and this is through SuperStream. SuperStream actually allows you to make all your super contributions in a single transaction. So um, we've got some resources. We've got Super for Business that you can have a look at and that'll um, provide all of that information for you. It sounds like it's a lot easier than it used to be because I know the stapled super was only brought in in the last few years. It used to be a lot different. Yeah, and look, the reason it was brought in was because you would see people with 10 different super, super accounts and small amounts in all of those that were being eroded by fees or that weren't growing. So this gave the opportunity to put them all together and hopefully get better outcomes for people, you know, in their retirement. Mm -hmm. Now I might just jump on to the final registration risk that you talked about, which was FBT, um, my final acronym, Fringe Benefits Tax. You've got to get used to acronyms (laughs) when you're dealing with tax. You do. It makes it so much easier. They're all a mouthful. Um, So FBT is one of those taxes that people have heard of, but they don't necessarily always understand what it means. Now, we have seen um, in the current competitive labour market that employers are increasingly offering benefits, or they might call them perks, and they might be things like car parking, gym memberships, footy tickets, or personal use of a work vehicle. And they're all ways that they might try and attract and retain staff. Now, sometimes this is done without employers understanding what the obligations are around that. Um, and that there could be FBT ramifications to providing these types of benefits. So for FBT, um, what happens is you calculate the taxable value of the various benefits that are provided to the employees. Once that happens, then the employer is responsible to pay that tax, and then the amounts are generally reported on the employee's payment summaries. So that can really impact their government benefits or things like child support. So it's really important that you do consider what the FBT obligations may be and those flow through impacts before you um, provide some benefits. Now, if you are going to be providing fringe benefits to employees or your asso- or their associates um, and you have a liability, you will need to register for FBT. So you can do that online or you can register by simply lodging your return. Um, obviously, you can do it on the phone um, through your registered tax agent or through a paper form as well. Now, FBT is a little bit quirky. 
because the fifth the FBT year starts on the 1st of April each year and runs through to the 31st of March. So it doesn't follow your re- regular financial year. Is there a reason? It seems a bit random. <sighs> well, it was introduced in 1986. Oh, so. okay. <laughs> Must be it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. A few things to think about. Oh, uh, exactly. There's, you know, there is a lot to navigate as an employer. So um, we are here to help. Um, and try and get your obligations right. So if you are struggling to understand anything, I encourage you to um, look at the resources we have online, look at the gu- guidance we have. There are training courses and there are calculators. So if I've managed to work through all of those different things we've discussed and I'm ready to hire, is there anything else I need to consider apart from all of those things we've talked about already? Yeah, so there are two more things that I will just call out that you probably need to think about up front. So the first one is um, consider whether the person you are hiring is going to be an employee or a contractor. So that means you really need to understand the relationship between yourself and the person that you're hiring and what your expectations are of them. Um, And this is really important because it's going to impact the tax, the super and other obligations such as workers' compensation insurance. It impacts the workers' entitlements as well as the different forms or contracts that you're going to need to complete when you bring them on board. Now, you need to look at the whole working relationship and we do have some guidance on our website. It is a case-by-case decision and you'll need to step through the process to work that out for yourself. Make sure if you are hiring contractors that you do have that discussion with them though so that they understand what it means for them. Now, you might think because you don't have a contractor, because you do have a contractor, you don't have to pay super. That's not necessarily always the case. So you will have to have a look and make sure whether you need to pay super or not for that contractor. We do a fair um, large number of audits where we do raise a super liability on an employer because they were not paying super for their contractor. Something else that you might not have thought of um, is whether your new worker is legally allowed to work in Australia. So Australian citizen, permanent residents and New Zealand citizens are all legally allowed to work here without any extra visas or permits. But if you think that your worker is a foreign national other than a New Zealander, um, then you have to confirm that they have a visa with permission to work. And then if you're hiring someone on a working holiday visa, which is a subclass 417 or 462, technical, I'm sure you need the technical numbers of those, but you must also register as an employer of a working holiday maker for that. Um, And they have different withholding tax rates. So you'll need to have a look at the info on our website around that. So now you're ready to hire someone and now it's time to do the paperwork. So you'll need to get tax file number and super details within 20, 28 days of them starting work. So we do have online commencement forms available for new employees and the employees need to complete those. They're on ATO online services. So once they submit those, the information is sent directly to us um, and they need to print out the employee tax details summary and give that to the employer. So the employer doesn't need to send that form to us. That's their copy and they use that to enter the information into their payroll um, system and then they're ready to go for payments. Alternatively, you can use the papers forms and people have probably seen those. They've been around forever. So your employees need to fill in the tax file number declaration and the super choice form. Again, you don't need to send them to us. Single touch payroll um, now provides that information to the ATO. So That's been um, a great bonus from STP. Now, the TFN form helps you work out how much you need to withhold. So you're going to get the person's tax file number, their residency status, whether they have any government study loan debts and whether they're claiming the tax-free threshold. If an employee doesn't provide you with their TFN, you'll need to withhold the the highest rate of tax plus Medicare with some limited exceptions. Wonderful. So you've got their tax details, the form sorted, you've lodged the details online. How do you work out how much to withhold from them in terms of tax? Yeah, look, and as I said earlier, pay-as-you-go withholding is used to offset the amount of tax that the worker is going to be liable for at the end of the financial year. So that means they might need to pay more tax, such as they have a help desk debt or less because they're entitled to the tax-free threshold. 
and they'll tell you when they're filling in the TFN deck. So then the amount of tax you need to withhold is going to depend on all of those. So it'll be dependent on everybody's individual circumstances. Now you can do this um, easily yourself using that information on the TFN deck. We've got tax tables and an online tax withheld calculator, but you'll probably find that your accounting or software, your payroll software is going to do it for you once you click the right boxes. Right. It sounds like it's worth finding a software that does solve that problem for you. Yeah, definitely. Um, anything that can make your job easier, like make life easier for you, is definitely worth um, investing in if you can. And if you're not sure, you can always engage a tax professional or payroll professional to help you. Um, depending on your total withholding amount, as an employer, you may need to remit those amounts to the ATO on a weekly basis, monthly or quarterly, but we'll tell you that so you don't need to worry about that. That was going to be my next question. So that makes life easy. What about paying super for myself and my employees? Yeah, look, super is really important. Um, it's not another tax or a government revenue. It provides savings for your employees in their retirement or for your workers in their retirement, potentially if you've got a contractor that you're paying super for. And the ATO does take the non-payment of superannuation very seriously. So most employees are eligible for super, and as I said, even some contractors are. So you need to report the super guarantee payable through STP, and you need to pay that for your eligible workers at least four four times a year, though we do see some employers pay more frequently, um, about 38% pay more frequently, and that um, does help them make sure that the super doesn't get wrapped up into their cash flow, which is really important. Payment due dates generally occur quarterly on the 28th of October, 28th of January, 28th of April and 28th of July. Now, these dates are when the super needs to be paid into the super fund. So if you're using a clearinghouse, you need to actually allow extra time for processing to make sure you meet these dates. Now, the minimum amount of super that you must pay for each eligible employee is 11.5%. And that's applied to an employee's ordinary times earnings. Now, that uh, percentage is going to increase to 12% from the 1st of July 2025. Now, you would have heard me say ordinary times earnings and you wonder what is that. And it's not always the same as your salary and wages. So take the time to read up, watch our help videos or take the online super course to understand what it means because it is different to salary and wages. If you don't pay the right amount of super on time, and to the right fund, you'll need to lodge a super guarantee charge statement. And then you need to pay that super guarantee charge to the ATO. Now, that's even if you're only one day late. So the law's really prescriptive on this, and the ATO doesn't actually have the ability to extend the due date. So we're not being mean. (laughs) It's what the law says. Um, And the super guarantee charge is more than your super contribution would have been. Um, So, And it's also not tax deductible. The super guarantee charge includes SG calculated on salary and wages, um, and that's often more than your ordinary time's earnings because that's going to include things like overtime. Uh, It will also include any choice liability. So if you haven't given your employees a choice of fund, then you'll have an extra penalty for that. It includes nominal interest of 10% per annum, and that starts at the um, beginning of the relevant quarter as well as an administration fee of $20 per employee per quarter. So you can see it adds up pretty quickly if you um, don't pay that the right amount of super um, on time. So there's a strong incentive for employers to do it right the first time. There definitely is. And then if you don't lodge your super guarantee charge statement, then you can also face additional penalties of up to 200% of what the super guarantee charge it was. So it is really important that you do get that super right. It does It does sound like something where getting expert tax advice would be very helpful here. Uh, it definitely uh, is something that you can get advice on. Um, it's really being mindful of those dates, those due dates. When they're, when do you, I need to get my super in? And not thinking 28th of October. 28th of October is when it needs to be processed by your clearinghouse. And as I said before, by getting all of your employees' details, then the super funds can match because 
You don't want them rejecting payments either or trying to find somebody. You want to make it as easy for everybody to get this through. This has been a really good overview of everything a small business owner needs to consider when hiring an employee or managing the current employees they have if there's a few things they need to get into place. Is there any other information that small business owners need to know? Oh, look, it sounds like a lot to remember. (laughs) But I do think once um, you've set yourself up right, it does become easier. And we do have all of those resources that you're going to put up, so that'll be fantastic. I think just to reiterate, take the time to understand your obligations. Um, Ensure that you have really good payroll governance practices um, and that'll make sure that you minimise making, you know, the errors that we see. Now, good payroll government governance means having a proper payroll framework, processes in place to check your payments and reporting. So that means making sure you complete your STP finalisations by the 14th of July, cross-check your information. So look at what you've got reported in your payroll. Does it match what you've reported through STP? Um, does it match what you have paid across to your employees, to the super funds, to the ATO? And then does it match what's been reported through the best? So those simple reconciliations. Um, and then finally, make sure you keep good records, particularly around that providing choice of fund. Mm. Quite a few things you need to know as a small business owner, but important and essential ones if you want to run a good business. That's right. And setting yourself up, it definitely helps you. Wonderful. Well, there are going to be plenty of links in the show notes. You can dive into everything we've discussed today. Peter, thank you so much for coming on the show today and sharing some of the essentials we need to know. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thanks for listening, everyone. Thanks for watching this video on the RAS Network. While you're here, don't forget to like and subscribe so you can get videos each and every day on business, finance, investing, and so much more. Thank you.